Hello, 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 and welcome to the Great Pop Culture Debate Primer for our episode devoted to the best 80s teen film. I'm Eric Resniak, and I'm going to tell you everything you missed in part one, which is available exclusively to our Patreon supporters and covers all the round one decisions that went from a top 32 to a sweet 16. Part two will be available to everyone tomorrow on all podcast platforms. Before we begin, how does this work? We put out a public poll featuring just about every teen film released in the 1980s that we could think of. For our purposes, we include films aimed specifically at teenage audiences, films featuring teenage protagonists, or films dealing with coming-of-age themes. Our listeners picked their favorites, we tallied the votes, and added them to a bracket. Then GPCD panelists Bob Erlenbach, Carissa Kloss, Kate Reculia, and myself argued about the top 32 films and insulted each other, all for your amusement. Want to play along at home? You can. Head to greatpopculturedebate.com and find this episode page to download the listener bracket. Fill it out right to the end. Do your picks match up with ours? Let us know by dropping a comment on our website or by yelling at us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Blue Sky, or Mastodon. With that out of the way, let's review what we covered in round one. First up, it was an upset, as the majority of the panel thought 8 Seed Valley Girl was totally rad compared to Ultimate Number 1 Seed Back to the Future. Despite Carissa's protestations that Future is still very much an 80s teen film, despite being set almost entirely in the 1950s, Valley Girl triumphed and moved into round two. Next, the panel was evenly split between two 80s supernatural teen features, 5 Seed Teen Wolf and 4 Seed The Lost Boys. In the end, the seeds won out and The Lost Boys moved on to sink their fangs into round two. Another even split between films showing the unintended consequences of unsupervised children. Carissa tried to Elizabeth shoehorn six seed adventures in babysitting into round two, but Bob used his computer skills to Frankenstein the perfect argument for three seed weird science, which advanced into round two. Next, the majority of the panel wanted to wax on with two seed The Karate Kid, which meant it was a premature evacuation for prototypical teen sex comedy Porky's, a seven seed. Next, put on those leg warmers, ladies, because we're going to break a sweat aerobic sizing to a whole slew of unanimous victories. Hit it! First, one seed Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure gave a wedgie to eight seed Revenge of the Nerds. Four seed Footloose made sure Ponyboy did not stay forever golden as five seed The Outsiders were shut out. Three seed Heathers blew up the chances of three seed Labyrinth. Two seed Sixteen Candles snuffed out seven seed Back to School. And last, one seed The Breakfast Club sent eight seed Uncle Buck packing. Next, three quarters of the panel thought the bracket would be better off with the five seed Better Off Dead in round two. But Bob tried to avoid the total annihilation of four seed war games. In the end, the paperboy won out and dead advanced to round two. Next, another unanimous decision as three seed fast times at Richmond High cruised past six seed say anything. The majority of the panel wanted to focus on beauty and pushed two seed pretty and pink into round two, while I relied on brains and preferred seven seed real genius. After the debate, pink was named prom queen and advanced into round two. Another unanimous decision as one seed Ferris Bueller's day off said Donka Shane as it pushed eight seed the legend of Billie Jean out of Cameron's dad's car. The panel was evenly split between four seed dead poet society and five seed dirty dancing. After an impassioned argument from Carissa, we ultimately did put baby in a corner and dead poets advanced into round two. The panel was again evenly split between films out 80s teens in trouble, three seed stand by me and six seed red dawn. Ultimately it was sunset for dawn and stand by me advanced to round two. Finally in round one, the panel did the truffle shuffle in favor of two seed the Goonies, but Kate wanted seven seed fame to live forever. Kate paid in sweat, but Goonies never say die, and they advanced to find the rich stuff in round two. And that's it. We're down to our sweet 16, so make sure you head over to the main feed tomorrow to find out which flick we ultimately decided was the best 80s teen film. Thank you for listening, and if you want to hear the great part one arguments behind these decisions, become a Patreon supporter of our podcast. Otherwise, make sure you subscribe to the show so you don't miss any of our upcoming episodes, and head to greatpopculturedebate.com where you'll find the polls that determine what we debate next and loads of cool bonus content. See you over in the main episode.